All right, so if you have been following me along with these lessons, this is the fifth lesson. At this point, we have learned not only some of the history of the containers, we have learned everything up to building our own image, and you have just made the greatest image known to mankind. That being said, you want to share it because you're a great person and you share great things that you've made. Let's start sharing it. But it's on your local system, and we need a way to share it with everyone else. We're going to upload it to a container repository. These are just locations where you can share container images, very similar to how you might share code. So a lot of people know how to share code on GitHub and container registries are just like that. In fact, GitHub has its own container registry so that you can share your container right along with its code. But we're not going to use GitHub. We are going to use a Docker Hub and mostly because it's very simple to do with the Docker command line as well as Docker Hub is the de facto container registry platform to share on. The really Another really cool aspect of Docker Hub is the Docker command line is already set up to pull images from Docker Hub. So it just makes it really simple to share your images this way. All right, so we built our image. Let's go ahead and create a Docker account. Creating a Docker account is fairly easy. Just go to Docker Hub and create an account. Now, once you've created your account, we're gonna log in with your new user on the command line. All you have to do is Docker login. Your username is actually your ID. Then your email as your email and hit return. At this point, it's going to prompt you for your super secret secure password. After you've entered that, you will have been logged in to Docker Hub. Now, one thing to note here, if this is a shared PC, .docker slash config.json will contain your uh, password, so be careful with that file. All right, if you list our images, you're gonna notice one thing is that our image isn't tagged correctly. Um, Docker has a very standard format for how to tag your images and pretty much all repositories follow these same guidelines. So basically it's your Docker Hub ID slash your image name colon the tag. So most of the time tags are used for the version. So you'll see like v.1.0 or you'll see something like colon latest. Latest means that it's like the bleeding edge and it's not necessarily a tagged version yet. And Docker actually defaults to latest if you don't give it a tag version. So let's go ahead and tag our image. All you have to do to tag an image is get the image ID and you can run Docker tag image ID and then the tag that you want to run. So in this, we will be the Docker Hub ID slash image name and then the tag. All right, so now that our image is tagged, let's check it out and we can run Docker images and see that our image is tagged properly. And now we want to push this to the Docker Hub repository. All you have to do is run Docker push, much like you would use Git. Docker push and the image ID the Docker Hub ID and the image name, and now you have pushed your image to Docker Hub. Let's go check it out on Docker. Here you can see I have pushed this image, and that is it. So now you can not only make your own containers, you can share them, and this doesn't even have to be sharing them with the world. You can now pull this container on another machine. So if you've packaged up something that you really like and wanna share it just with yourself, this is a great and easy way to do that. All right, I wanna thank you. If you have been here for this entire class, you rock and you are awesome. Uh, so this is the final one for this introduction to containers. You have learned all of the basics of containers and congratulations, you've done a great job. I wanna also thank you for joining me on this journey as we discover what containers are and dig even deeper into them. Now, I, I wanna take this time to get you excited for the future of this lesson. So if you're like, wow, this was great and I want to learn more, the answer is there's so much more to learn. And I really wanna provide a lot of these intermediate classes that are going to actually let you expand on this and learn things like debugging containers effectively. 
So I have at least three more classes in the pipelines on this very topic. The very first one is going to be mastering containers locally. And that's where we're going to learn to use tools like Docker Compose, um, Podman, and Cryo. So some different container runtimes, as well as some different tools that help you wrap the entire ecosystem and leverage containers locally very powerfully. Then we're also going to use containers to empower our dev workflow. So we're going to learn how to use them to test things locally and to run and make our lives faster uh, on our local machines. And then at the very end of that class, we're going to learn to debug containers. This is something that's very hard for a uh, person new to containers to learn. And I'm going to show you some of my thought processes and things like that going into debugging a problem with containers and take you along for the ride. Then the next class in the series is more of an advanced class, and this is mastering production containers. And you're going to learn everything from multi-stage contain container builds, why you need them, and for security and space consumption. The other things we're going to learn about is making small purpose-driven containers, as well as designing your application to run in a container. Because while you can containerize everything, not everything runs effectively in a container, as well as understanding container runtime capabilities. This is very important when you're starting to talk about production grade containers. And then the last class in this series is going to be Leet Containers. This is for the not faint of heart and will be the last class released. We will do everything from building a container by hand. I don't mean using a Docker file. I mean leveraging the Linux kernel itself and building out everything manually from the C groups to the namespaces and building a proxy to let us interact with that container inside of there. Not only will we do that, we'll dig into tools like Run C and see how it builds OCI compliant containers and why things like Docker utilize Run C. We're actually going to dig into how modern containers run, but not at a high level. We're going to get down and dirty into the guts of a container and the Linux kernel. So if those sound interesting to you, go ahead, tell your friends about this get some excitement going for it, and uh, I will be building those out for us in the future. That being said, I don't just plan on releasing classes on containers. I also have classes coming out on Kubernetes and as well as Linux. So be watching for those if those are interesting to you. Now, I do want to give a really high level overview of everything that we learned in this class. Remember, containers look to solve a plethora of problems, not just isolation. VMs do a very good job at isolating. Containers help us with immutable infrastructure, repeatability, security, as well as scaling. Because of the immutable infrastructure and the ability to expand horizontally, they give you the ability to do all of these things at the same time as well as they enable you to do it quickly. VMs are much more bulky, require much more space, and are not nearly as fast to scale out and whatnot. All right, so that is it. I'm going to keep this outro to a minimum. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope to continue bringing you some fantastic classes on Kubernetes, containers, and computer science. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next class.